In this video, we're going to learn about using Excel to create formulas that include basic cell references. So, if I'm interested in creating a little input-output table, so for example, perhaps I want to create a table that inputs X values, like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and it outputs Y values that are 3 times X. So when I plug in X is 0, Y would equal 0. When I plug in x is 1, y would equal 3. When x is 2, y is 6, then y is 9, then y is 12. So the table I just created, I manually entered all the x's and I manually entered all the y's. But instead, one of the most valuable things we can use Excel for is to perform these calculations for us in a very quick way. So for example, let's say I manually entered the x's and I want to have Excel perform the calculations for me to give me the Y values. Here in cell E2, I'm going to create a formula so that it calculates three times the X value in cell D2. Remember when you're writing a formula in Excel, when you're performing a calculation, you always start with equals. So I type my equal sign and Excel now understands that I want it to perform a calculation. One thing I could do is I could just type 3 times 0, and it would calculate 3 times 0 and give me an answer of 0. But instead, I'm going to write this formula as equals 3 times the value that's in cell D2. So I'm going to click cell D2. You see that the formula now says take 3 times whatever number is in cell D2. So since currently cell D2 has the value 0 in it, it's going to take 3 times 0. And when I press enter, it gives an answer of 0. Similarly, here in cell E3, I want this cell to equal 3 times the value in cell D3. So 3 times D3, it's going to take 3 times 1 because the value in cell D3 currently is 1. Now I'm on the next cell down. I want this cell to equal 3 times the value in cell D4. It'll take 3 times 2 because that's the value in cell D4. And this one will be 3 times D5 and this one will equal 3 times D6. So you can click on any of these cells at any time. Although the cell is displaying the answer, you notice up in the formula bar, it does tell you the formula that it's using to calculate that cell value. All right, let's make that even better, do that in an even easier way. All right, again, I'm going to manually put in my X values for now. Again, I want to write a formula that has Excel perform the calculation for me. So we learned to perform this calculation. In cell H2, I can type equals three times, and I want it to take the X value from cell G2 this time. Press Enter. Now, when I went down the last time when I was doing this example a moment ago, I just kept manually writing the formula. But really, it's the same formula over and over and over. So in cell E2, it's 3 times D2. Go down a notch, it's 3 times D3. Go down a notch, it's 3 times D4. Go down a notch, it's 3 times D5. It's the same formula. All it's doing is changing the cell that it's referencing. Excel has the ability to understand that pattern and drag it down for you. You'll notice right now when my cursor is just here in any part of the Excel worksheet, it looks like a big white cross. If you take your cursor and you move it to the bottom right corner of the Excel uh, cell where you wrote the formula, you notice that it turns into a little black cross. Again, outside of there it's a white cross. I move it to the bottom right corner of the cell where the formula is, it's a little black cross. When it looks like this little black cross, when you're in the bottom right corner, you're going to hold down your left mouse button and you're going to drag this down. 
what this is doing is dragging the entire formula you wrote down. Look, it just auto fills your entire table. Now in that first cell it was equals 3 times G2. If you go down a notch you see that it's now 3 times G3, the cell to the left. If you go down a notch you see it's 3 times G4. And if you go down a notch, it's 3 times G5. Excel understands that you want to take 3 times the cell to the left. Let's do it again. So let's create a brand new input-output table. This time I'm going to input X's and output Y equals 350 times um, 1.04 raised to the X. So I'm going to plug in 0, 1, 2, 3. For X's. Okay, here in cell E10, I want this cell to equal 350 times 1.04 raised to the, and I want it to find the X value by using the cell to the left. So that's here, cell D10. So it'll take 350 times 1.04 raised to the D10, whatever is in that cell. I press enter. I could go down and type in the next one, the next formula manually, but I know I want it to do the same thing. I want it to take 350 times 1.04 raised to the cell to the left. So I'm going to drag the formula down. Right now my cursor looks like a little white cross. I'm going to put the cursor on the bottom right corner of the cell so it looks like a little black cross. I hold down the left mouse button, drag it down, and it automatically fills it in. So if my cursor's in cell E11, you see it's referencing the cell to the left, D11. If my cursor's in E12, it's referencing the cell to the left, D12. All right, let's try another set here. Okay, I'm going to create an input-output table where I input x's and I output the value 3x minus 1. Now this time, instead of manually entering x values, I'm going to have Excel fill in the x's and fill in the y's. So I'm going to start my table at an input value of negative 10, and I would like the next value to be negative 8, and then the value after that, negative 6, then negative 4, then negative 2, then 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I want these x values to increase by an increment of 2 each time. So I could manually go in and enter that, but that would take a long time. Instead, I'm going to write a little formula to do it. I want the next cell down, the cell here in A3, to equal the cell above it plus 2. Right? I want the number in cell A3 to be negative 10 plus 2. I'm going to press enter. I want this cell in A4 to equal the cell above it plus 2. So there's a pattern here. Each x value should be the cell above it plus 2. Whenever you have this sort of pattern, you can drag that formula down. So again, my cursor right now is a little white cross. If I want to drag down a formula, I put my cursor in the bottom right hand corner until it looks like a little black cross hold down the left mouse button, drag it down, and it continues that formula for you. So if I click on one of these, for example here in cell A10, it's taking the cell above it, A9, plus 2. Alright, now I want cell B2 to calculate a y value that equals 3 times x subtract 1. So I want cell B2 to equal 3 times the x value. So it's going to get the x value from the left, this number negative 10, so this cell minus 1. So it equals 3 times negative 10 is in cell A2 and then subtracts 1. 
And if I want that formula to drag down through all the X's, I put my cursor on the bottom right corner and drag it down. And there it goes. So for example, in cell B10, it's taking 3 times cell A10 minus 1. Now one of the most useful things about this is that you can make one change in your table and it will reevaluate everything. So I started this entire table at an input value of x equals negative 10. What I'd like to do now is just change it. Let's say we started my table at 0 instead. Now notice, when I change the starting value here to x equals 0, the next cell down is still adding 2, because that's the formula I created. And the y values are still taking 3 times the x value subtract 1, but I started at, at x equals 0 instead of x equals negative 10, and everything else automatically adjusted. So if I wanted to go way up to like 1500 or 1550 to start, the next cells in the x's would go up by 2, but the y's are still doing 3 times the x value minus 1. 